hump day. Happy hump day. Happy hump day, YouTube. How are you? We're going to read more today of Jacqueline Suzanne. It is a very delightful story and saucy. And here is my shout out is my almost empty tube of scarlet paint. I, it's just a little cheapy tube because they travel easy. If I leave it behind somewhere, it doesn't matter. It only costs a few pennies. That And this is my product placement is peanut butter. I've never tried this brand. I got it at Aldi. I'm... I'm, you know, I don't oppose organic things. I just don't usually buy organic things. I can't say that I'm particularly sold on organic being better, but, you know, the peanut butter, anyway, I bought it. So we'll see. It costs quite a bit more than what I normally would pay, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. I'll keep you posted. So let's just get into this. Never thought I was going to make it home. It was such a journey to get home today. But I've made it. So we will read some more of Jacqueline Suzanne's Dolores. Okay, we are up to chapter 18 called, this is called Love. A, a year passed and she began to wonder when she would get control of the buried situation. Usually with crushes, she grew weary of them and took the commanding position like with Eddie Harris. He had not been allowed to touch her since Barry, but he was so eager to be with her, he took her on any terms. And even Michael was quick to spring at any engagement when she needed an important escort. His wife, Joyce, took it all in good grace. Personally, Joyce found Dolores very stilted and dull, and she understood that Michael felt playing escort to her on an important occasion was his duty. During the year, Anita flew back to London twice, once to keep things looking right with Nelson, going to all the proper balls, and the second time to make one last plea to the Baron. She had returned more depressed than ever. Eric wants no part of me, she said, sobbing to Dolores. I practically got on my knees and begged him. How can he want that old ballerina? Nita, Dolores said, trying to comfort her. Does it occur to you that Eric is 61 and Ludmilla is over 50? You're young. You want sex. Maybe Eric is, sh is slowing down. Maybe he can't do it as often as you would like, and maybe Ludmilla is content to accept him on any terms. I'd accept him with sex only once a week on any terms, too. But Nita found a new set of friends and a few new lovers, she still lunched with Horatio and still occasionally went to Dolores in tears over Eric, but she bought clothes, attended parties, and soon became a regular of the beautiful people seen. Life settled down to a comfortable routine for Dolores. Her public life was sparse enough to make any outing a major event, even if she went to an offbeat place like Ginger Man with Bridget, she would find all the reporters and photographers waiting outside. They would follow her on her bike rides with the twins and Mary Lou. Mary Lou was becoming a problem. She was nine now and wanted to dress in leotards and plaid skirts. Dolores was trying to keep her young looking and Mary Lou was growing so fast and putting on weight. She solved the clothes problem by switching her to an excellent Catholic school where all they wore were uniforms. But only the moments spent with Barry Haynes counted. They saw each other every day, even if he just dropped by for a martini <clears throat> or a quick lunch. And then there were always the three nights they had together. Constant believed in the weekly law meeting, the one night he played squash and his poker night. Actually, Constance didn't really care Hello, how are you, Cavalera? Good to see you. Very good to see you. Um, Constant didn't really care. She played backgammon, had a multitude of friends, and was on many charities and spent all her winters in Palm Beach. Winter was their best time and their worst. They were together every night except for the weekends when he had to fly to Palm Beach. And on the holidays, Christmas and New Year's without Barry was agonizing. 
But there were good times in the winter when he taught the children how to make popcorn around the fire and when they all trimmed the tree. True, it was a week before Christmas. And in a way, it made up for the loneliness of Christmas and New Year's Eve without him. He generally adored the twins and Mary Lou. Mary Lou had a giant-sized crush on him and would go out of her way to have a problem with the math and bring it to him. Oddly enough, it annoyed Dolores to see Mary Lou snuggle on Barry's lap in her bathrobe. She was overdeveloped for her age and was beginning to grow breasts. Dolores had very small breasts, but she could see Mary Lou was going to be amply endowed. And when she grew older and lost the baby fat, she'd be magnificent. Their evenings together were usually harmonious and filled with love. At 10 o'clock, she'd made a big show in front of the servants of seeing him out. Then in 15 minutes, he'd pretend to go to the door to see if the papers had been dropped, and Barry would sneak back in. He would remain overnight, rising at 6 in time to slip out before the servants or the children got up, go to his apartment, shave and change, and go to the office. And once he was there, he would call her and wake her up at 10 by telling her he loved her. She refused to join any committees or charities. She did participate in Bridget's charity for homeless pregnant girls, but that only took one after afternoon a month. She knew the press speculated on her loneliness, on her rare luncheons with Bridget, Janie, Jensen, or Nita. Nita also sent her clothes. She would go out of her way to buy something a bit too large, but Dolores knew it was because she felt sorry for her. She had told Nita that her affair with Eddie Harris was washed up, that they were just friends. But as time passed and another obsession with Barry grew, she began to have daydreams about their possible marriage. If she was careful with his 20000 and her thirty, they could manage. Perhaps he could get an annulment. Chapter 19, Sisters. In the spring, Nita decided to take another quick trip to London to attend a round of social events with Nelson. He had broken with the princess. There was someone else, but it wasn't dreadfully important. Also, Nelson wanted to see the children, and she had just posed for a top fashion photographer and would be on the cover in New York and Paris on a magazine called Fashion. It's breaking just in time, Nita said, thinking, think of the publicity it will give me. Is that important to you? It never was before. Once I was considered glamorous, a great beauty, now I'm just your sister. Everywhere I go, people ask me what you're really like. Every place I'm invited to in this country, I find I'm really invited because I'm your sister. They even have to term, uh, have the termity to ask me if I can manage to make you come. There's one slob of a woman designer who's offered me a whole wardrobe free if I'll just bring you to one of her dinners. I'm going there tonight, and I know she'll make the offer again. She never gives up. Then why do you go? Nita shrugged, because she's a celebrity collector, and as much as I love her, she does have interesting guests. It's funny. They all hate her, but they come because they know everyone will be a name, and I've met more quick darling romances there. Nita, I never knew you were this promiscuous. I never really was. Oh, I lost my virginity ahead of you, but I think that was only because I was curious. But now I need these romances, these Sunday afternoons. Even though it was common knowledge in London that Nelson had a girl, I had a certain glamour. Here, I'm nothing. You're the big star now. But, Nita, that's just because I was married to Jimmy. That may have started it, but it's more than that now. Jimmy's been dead almost four years, and your popularity has never been greater. You're on the cover of every magazine. You're like a goddess, the lonely, lovely goddess, just spending her time with her children, taking long walks, the regal beauty, mysterious, aloof, glamorous, and me, with all the fantastic clothes and jewelry. I'm just your sister. It's even that way in Europe now. Why do you think Nelson wants me to come back? He even asked if you could come. Maybe I could. Easter was coming. Barry would have to go to Palm Beach, the lonely holidays again. No, I don't want you to come. I want to be someone on my own. Why do you think I permit Horatio the whore around? I thought he amused you. 
No, he's as funny as the others, but he takes me to Pearl's, Elaine's, and a lot of fun places, needled in a cigarette. But do you know something? It's not fun anymore. Suddenly, all the faces seem to say, seem the same, and suddenly I'm no longer a big attraction, and Horatio, he's beginning to get on my nerves. That insane giggle of his, his hands are almost moist, always moist, and he's suddenly begun to drink a lot. But at least he still treats me as if I'm really important. Incidentally, he hates you. He says you're a snob. Well, thank God. I don't have to please Horatio Capon. Oh, he's not important. Tears came to Nita's eyes. My life is such a mess, Dolo. I've got nothing. Suddenly she fell into her sister's arms and began to sob convulsively. Dolores held her like a child and stroked her hair. You've got everything, Nita. That is, you've got plenty to be thankful for. You've got your husband. Granted, it's not ideal in marriage, but any, if anything went wrong, if you, you or the children were sick, he'd be there. And you've got wonderful children, a brilliant social life, and plenty of money. And what's more, you can come and go as you please, and Nita, people do know who you are. Yes, I'm Dolores Ryan's sister. No, you are Lady Bramley and a very beautiful lady at that, and you've always been far more beautiful than I. You've just been locked away with Horatio too long. Nita made a faint attempt at a smile, then Dolores said, Nita, I've never asked a favor of you in my life, but please, please let me go back to London with you. I won't go to any of the big parties. I don't have the clothes for them, but I'd love to bring the children there over the Easter holidays. It's a lonely time for them without a father. We'd stay at your place in the country. Oh, I can just see it, Nita said, sitting up and daintily wiping the mascara from under her eyes. All the press at the airport, I'd have to give a gala for you, and then that would start the whole thing. Besides, I don't want any responsibilities. I'm going to try to see Eric. Maybe since all this time has passed, maybe he's missed me. But he must be at 60, he, but he must be 62, and, and he's still virile. He's one of those men who will still be enjoying sex at 80, Dolo. Don't you see? My return will at least give me an opening wedge with him. It falls right on my birthday. I'll send him a, right on his birthday. I'll send him a gift, and if he's not in London, I'll fly to Paris or Rome. Or wherever he is. I hear his new ship is finished. It's supposed to be a miniature of the SS France. I read about it in, the, in time. They say he knocked out whole decks. There are seven master duplex suites, ten master bedrooms, three salons, a ballroom, an indoor-outdoor pool, a skating rink. He's the only man who turned an ocean liner into a private yacht. That's true, Odello. Don't you see I can't bring you to London? I'd expect to be seen with you, have luncheon with you, tea, and a new rash of attention would be focused on me. The paparazzi would be after me, but not for me, for you. And the picture of me will break all in the cover of fashion just at that time. But with you there on the cover of every magazine, it would rob me of my big moment. Dolores sat beside her sister and held her hand. Look, Nita, if you really love Eric, maybe it would be better if you played it loose. Nita laughed. You are a great one to be giving the advice to me on love. Now I realize that, but even I know that if you smother a man, he tries to break away. That's why European women are supposed to be such great mistresses. They know just how to hold the rein. It's easy for you to talk from theory, Nita said as the tears came to her eyes again. You don't know what it's like to lie awake at night and dream of a man. I know Eric is ugly by your standards, but Dolo, when he walks into a room, I get weak. He, he turns me on, and as they say, look... All this time has passed, and I still think only of him. When are you leaving for London, Dolores asked. Next week, tell me what I can get for you, for a billionaire who has everything. Eric, Eric, Dolores seemed thoughtful. I, I don't know. No, you wouldn't. You're really cold, aren't you, Dolores? We've never really been close or really known one another. What makes you think that I'm cold? Well, look at the second record. Look at the record since Jimmy died. And let's face it, you've never really held him. But now, what have you done? You have had a chance with one of the most attractive men in the world, Eddie Harris. And now he's dating some big glamour girl in Hollywood, and it doesn't bother you. Then there's your affair with Barry Haynes. What do you do with yourself? 
I lunch with Bridget once a week. Timothy is failing. It would be so much better for Bridget if he died. I'd ha I'll, uh, I'll have to take the children to the farm for Easter, and it's so depressing to see him being lifted in and out of a wheelchair, hear him moaning in pain. Bridget is very strict. She only let him have his painkiller every four hours. Dolores paused. Incidentally, Nita, you aren't still on Demerol, not only when I'm bitterly unhappy and want to float, but I haven't had any for three days. I'm planning my campaign for Eric. I must have a clear head. Need. I hope you get him back, if that's what you really want. You really don't understand it, do you? No, because he's so unattractive, and I have the feeling that, title or not, he has no sensitivity and no deep emotion, and these are the things that make a woman really love a man. Nita Rose, how would you know about love? Anyway, happy time in Virginia, and please, Dolo, wish me luck. Oh my goodness. Well, we'll stop there today. We're up to chapter 20. And chapter 20 is called The Bait. The Bait. And we are reading Dolores by Jacqueline Suzanne. What a steamy novel. And this is my product placement. It's my small tube of scarlet red. It's almost empty. And this is my product placement is peanut butter. I bought it from all D. I don't usually do organic things. I'm not really sold on organic being better, but maybe it is. I don't know. But this was it, you know. I don't want to buy the one that has the hydrogenated vegetable shortening and peanut flavoring because that's not really food. That's that's like you could grease your bike chain with that. So that's that. I'll give this a try. I'll let you know how it goes. I hope you're having a great Wednesday. Hope day. Let me know you were here, so I'll visit your channel. Have a great afternoon. Big kiss. Bye-bye.